Hey guys, so it's been two years since we uh, got the uh, new bike, the Ducati Diavel, and uh, a few of you will have been following the trials and tribulations, um, but I thought we would do a two-year review of the uh, various products and uh, things that we've, well, I've used, and uh, just with you know thoughts after two years use and 11,000 miles. So the first helmet I bought was the Schuberth C3 Pro. The uh, also I bought the Schuberth Comms system. The helmet's expensive, and the comm system is expensive, and uh, we'll discuss that in a minute. When I started the blood bike training, I wanted a uh, better flip front, and we'll discuss that in a minute. So I went for this uh, BMW, uh, you know what, I can't even remember the Evo number. Is it an Evo 5 or Evo 6? Doesn't matter, I'll, I'll put it in the description because I just simply can't remember. Um, so let's discuss why, first of all, the C3 Pro seemed to be one of the best helmets uh, you know, available at the time. Uh, again, at the time I didn't know about the Sharp website. And if I had uh, known about that first, I may not have bought uh, this helmet, um, mainly because the side impact protection is not as good as it could be, uh, but still a very good uh, helmet. Uh, so apart from the cost and the cost of the comms system, let's discuss what I've found over the two years. The fit's good. I've got no issues with the uh, fit possibly slightly more pressure on my temples than the BMW helmet but again that's going to be a completely personal uh, thing for everybody uh, but the fit is good uh, the noise level uh, is uh, acceptable uh, both uh, helmets in my opinion have similar noise levels I obviously wear earplugs um, but the, yeah there is noise um, the visor on this is not as good as the BMW. It is a bit floppy in this, in these lower positions. So you can be going along with a little bit of ventilation, and it will just go shut, you know, like that. It is relatively hard to seal completely like that. You really struggle with one hand to uh, to do that really need some good force on there and that's uh, you know that's a bit inconvenient but the visor is good it has the pin lock uh, system the main difference in the uh, between the BMW and the Schuberth the Schuberth vision is far better the um, try to do this in reverse but the cutouts down the side here go much further back down the helmet uh, and your vision is much better, peripheral vision is much better than on the BMW. I can find that, I, well, I do find that I am not turning my head as far as I am with the BMW helmet because I can literally see much further down the side. So that is a noticeable difference between the Schuberth and the BMW and that gets my uh, approval uh, for vision. Visor not so good, vision excellent, ventilation on this uh, not so good. Um, it's okay, you know, when you've got the visor up a little bit, but that's not always convenient. Um, but the ventilation is definitely poorer. Now I don't think there's any more padding that I can remove to improve that. And if you compare that to BMW, uh, if you've got the visor slightly open about to there and then you close it with this vent open you can instantly feel the cool air on the top of your head inside the helmet and uh, I, I ride with it open all the time as I do with the uh, uh, the shoe berth but the ventilation on this is excellent far better than the shoe berth in my opinion so sadly neither of one of these is going to get the full marks because there's features of both that I would like in one. I'd certainly like the Schuberth Vision in the in the BMW. Um, so like I said, the BMW, very nice, secure visor, 
positions. Ventilation is excellent. Noise levels are similar. The helmet was uh, relatively cheap. Uh, there, I clumped for the BMW system uh, before I realised it didn't have bike-to-bike uh, -bike communications. This was purely for uh, the rider and uh, it was not going to work bike to bike like uh, the Schubert does. However, in my particular case, I have never needed to uh, use uh, those bike to bike features. Uh, and on occasions where I thought it would be useful, the instructor has, uh, has not <laughs> had a compatible system. So I've never personally needed it, but I'm sure for most bikers, uh, you know, a rider to rider comm system would be a massive benefit, and again, then the shoe berth gets uh, the marks for that. However, there is an issue with the shoe berth uh, the volume that you can hear through the earpieces is not good, it is not very high at all. I've tried repositioning the uh, speakers, um, but there's limited movement there, uh, and it's just not loud enough. As you know, unless you're going at low speeds, that is definitely not loud enough. Over the last month or two, I have been swapping between helmets, uh, depending on what I'm doing. The volume on the BMW is way louder uh, and is acceptable, really up to higher speeds where the wind noise you know will take over uh, but there's nothing you can do about that but this is far louder than the shoe berth and uh, definitely gets the uh, approval right over the uh, shoe berth uh, now the fit for both of these uh, for me in my head is uh, is very similar slight pressure on my temples with the shoe berth uh, none of that with the bmw the reason I got the, the BMW was because the shoe berth flip front is very hard to close uh, securely. Um, you cannot do that whilst you're riding, and you can't ride with it up. I think you can with the BMW. I'd have to double check the uh, approvals whether they, they either are okay to ride with the, uh, the flip front up but this is so hard to shut mainly because it's such a snug fit around your face um, I always found that only one side would be sealed and clicked into place uh, and that was troublesome uh, or troubling because you know in a crash uh, and you've only got half of the flip front secured there could well be issues uh, the BMW, on the other hand, is uh, totally different. It's a one-handed operation, and uh, you can close it with one hand, and it has a super positive locking mechanism where the shoe berth really is lacking uh, quite seriously on that front. It sounds okay now, uh, but once it's on, and the helmet's being pulled around, it really is quite hard to do. You, you find yourself reaching down the side of the helmet just to fill the gap there um, because it, you know, it can, I probably won't be able to do it now, but, but yeah, it, it's kind of like that. You're trying to get it shut and then you find that the other side's not clicked in uh, properly and you just don't need that uh, level of aggro on a, on a flip front helmet. Very similar uh, controls on the headset front. It's very nice the way the BMW one fits uh, like that and if it had had bike to bike uh, comms it would be absolutely perfect for you know most riders. It's a nice and neat finish. Uh, battery life is good on both of these. There's camera mount uh, room on both. I've got it on the same side as you can see and uh, no particular issues there. Changing visors, easy on both. Um, there's no, it's a slightly different way of doing it. On this one there's a lever, this one there's a push button there and you pull the visor out. No particular issues there. Uh, the pin lock I've left on the BMW 
I've removed it on the shoe berth mainly because it does not come up, up. It is, it's not fully over the uh, visor and I found uh, that it was not blocking my view, it was getting in the way of my view. I often wanted to look uh, through here where the pin lock, um, sorry I think it was down the bottom, the pin lock uh, piece didn't go down low enough for my liking so I have removed it on there and left it on the BMW. In fact I thought I'd removed it from the BMW and I hadn't noticed that it was there but you can see that the pin lock goes all the way around the actual aperture of the visor and uh, the shoe berth one certainly doesn't and it does uh, it doesn't impede your vision it's an annoyance because you can see this line where it ends and uh, I don't like that so overall like the shoe berth design like the euro uh, flags and everything on it it was very expensive the headset was very expensive and I can't recommend that uh, to anyone uh, unless you really really need this improved peripheral vision um, and I certainly don't recommend you spend an absolute fortune on their the SRS uh, sorry SRC headset system the BMW headset system is far uh, way the better option for volume uh, except unless you need the rider to rider feature and then I think a third party solution for both of these it would be a better way to go um, uh, yeah so that's been that really the uh, microphone uh, I have used uh, for recording is the uh, drift microphone and we're still using the drift camera that has worked uh, perfectly had no issues with those. The only time I've ever had an issue is when these USB cables actually start to fail. I have this plugged into a, a RAV battery pack, so I can pretty much run that continuously for you know days and days, and I charge the battery packs up. I don't know, once a month, something like that. Um, so yeah, no issues with the microphone. The Inbuilt microphone for the BMW is excellent. Again, uh, the inbuilt one on the shoe berth has been absolutely fine. Can't remember whether I've lost the little phone bit off of there or whether it never had it. I'd have to look back at the original uh, videos. But uh, I had no complaints about call uh, volume or call clarity when I've uh, taken the odd phone call. I try to avoid any interruptions when I'm riding but occasionally I've had to take a, a phone call. It's very easy to do um, on both. So yeah, the BMW is the one I would uh, go for out of the two. It's a cheaper option, better noise uh, in the headset system, far better ventilation than the shoe berth, I uh, just don't like this slight lack of uh, peripheral vision. Uh, but no doubt I will continue to use these uh, you know, day to day and just swap around. Um, if it's hot out I'll wear the BMW, uh, if it's not so warm probably go with the shoe berth. Um, but if I'm navigating somewhere, going somewhere I don't know and I need the sat nav, then I would certainly be using the BMW purely because I can actually hear it, especially at higher road speeds. Anyway, so two year update on those. And as always, thanks for watching. And there'll be more videos now um, about the bike and all the other equipment that I've used just with a, a little two year review.